In this video, we're going to look at key signatures and how Sibelius deals with them and how you can use them to the best effect. I have a, a small piece here, a wee 8 bar piece, but I'm going to first of all demonstrate using empty bars how to use key signatures. You'll notice first of all that the piece is in the key of G major. So if I decided I want to change the key, let's say at this bar here, I would select the bar line. I would then go to the Notations tab, pick the key signature box, and then pick the new key signature from there. You will notice that the key signatures are categorised as no sharps or flats, major sharp keys, major flat keys, minor sharp keys, or minor flat keys. Let's choose, uh, let's choose B flat major. So now puts the piece into B flat major, gives me a double bar line beforehand, which is the correct procedure for changing key. It's all very straightforward and exactly as, we, as you would expect Sibelius to do. Let me just control Z that to undo it. There we go. If, however, I select a single bar of music rather than a bar line and go through the same procedure, you will notice that just that bar is in the new key and it reverts back to the previous key afterwards. Now that can be handy if you're only wanting to have a small section of music in the new key. For example, I can select a range of bars like that, go through the procedure and just those bars are in the new key and it reverts back afterwards. That's a very handy um, feature to be aware of. One thing you have to very much be aware of is the fact that when Sibelius changes the key signature, it does not transpose the notes that already exist into the new key. So for example, if I take these four bars here, select them, and change the key signature, let's say into B flat major, you can see all the sharps and flats and stuff are still exactly as they were. But of course we now have to have all the accidentals notated because that will still sound exactly the same So it hasn't transposed and it wasn't it's not supposed to transpose, it's only supposed to notate the new key signature, which it, which is done up here and reverted back afterwards. Just going to control Z that just to undo it back so it sits looking properly. Now you may find that to go from whichever tab you happen to be in into the notations tab, find the key signature box and choose the key is a bit arduous for you. So of course Sibelius has given you a keyboard shortcut. And that keyboard shortcut, if I select a bar, I'm going to change, let's pick this one here, to change the bar, the key signature there. The keyboard shortcut, of course, is K for key signatures. And that brings up the key signature box from whichever tab you happen to be in. If I, for example, I'm in the layout tab looking at something and I want to change key signature, hit the letter K and immediately take into the notations tab and I can choose it from there. I can then just go through the same procedure. Let's go for E flat major this time. And that's as simple as that to change, to change the key signature. Having a look at the dialog box, you will notice right at the bottom of it, there's a more options button. If I click on the more options button, it brings up what we call the legacy dialog box, which is the one that you'll recognise from previous versions. This gives you one or two other options. Um, you can hide a key signature or you can suggest that it goes on to a single staff. We'll look at these in a bit more detail in a further video. One thing that's worth noticing um, about Sibelius and key signatures is that by default, whenever you create a score, you're creating a concert pitch score. All these keys are the same key, whereas the clarinet in B flat should have a different key signature from the rest of the instruments because a flute and a bassoon are both concert pitch instruments, whereas a clarinet is always a transposing instrument. If you go to the Home tab, you'll see that there's a transposing score button which isn't highlighted. If I click on that, you can now see that 
Sibelius shows me what the clarinet player would have to see to change that. And that obviously will apply with any key changes that we've made throughout the course of the piece. If you click on this button here, the B plus sign, this will open up the list of parts and you can go to the clarinet part and you can see exactly what the key signature is and what it changes to for the various times during the course of the piece. So Sibelius deals with key signatures very efficiently and very effectively, as you would expect from Sibelius.